listening to Give God 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. Happy Monday, everyone. Thank you for letting me spend some time with you. It is, I don't know where you are, but where we're at, it's a bright, sunny Monday morning. That's it's always beautiful. a good thing. I am being closely monitored and supervised. He is. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, <laughs> Great day to be alive. Yes, it is. If you <laughs> haven't been to GiveGodNight.com lately, you might want to check that out. I've updated some things there. More to come at some point in the future. <laughs> I don't know when. Uh, if you like what you hear, be sure to hit those like buttons. Um, I keep forgetting to mention we're on YouTube as audio, and I don't know why. <laughs> it, it it just doesn't. It's just something new and you don't remember to tell. Yeah. Well, it's not new. We've been there for a while. I just haven't given it much thought. Because <laughs> when you think about YouTube, you think about video, right? And that's not what we do at the moment. So. <laughs> and I just I just got this horrible face like no don't make me dress up again <laughs> excuse me <laughs> um there's all kinds of all, all kinds of stuff going on and speaking of all kinds of stuff going on um we will be out of touch for a couple of weeks so I'll try and remember to queue up something from some previous episodes, uh, or you can go back through the archives and listen to whatever you want to listen to. That's always a good idea. I know somebody has actually, a new listener has actually started from the beginning, which is always fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, if you happen to follow me on one of the social media platforms I'm on, I may or may not update those daily. I don't know. If I have time, I will. If I don't have time, I won't. So we'll just going to enjoy some time with family and hopefully. <laughs> when we're back, we're back. When we're back, we're back. <laughs> uh, if you have been out of touch over the weekend, I need to say something about the death of the president of Iran, Ibrahim Rassi. I believe is how you say that. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of lot of things in the news going on. It depends on which papers you read. Um, this gentleman was known for years as the Butcher of Tehran. And he was not kind to the people he considered his enemies. Let's just put it that way. Um there are people in Iran who are mourning his death, and there are people in Iran who are celebrating his death. The president of Iran basically is not much more than a figurehead. The Ayatollah pretty much guides the nation, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, the people there will be able to have a at least a president who is a little more understanding of the actual people who live there, uh, and less butcherish, I guess, less evil, if that's possible. You know that the uh, nation of Iran is not considered an Arabic nation. It's considered a Persian nation. We've talked about that before, and um, might need to might need to go into a little more depth and detail when we get back about that. But today I want to look at something that should be concerning for everyone. Um, you know, you might be doing something without realizing it. And until you actually realize it and understand what's involved in, in, in happen, what's happening, you may have been taught to do this. You may have been trained to do this. And that is making an idol out of something or someone. 
and it's very, very concerning. Um, now, most people would say that you can make an idol out of anything, right? A a <laughs> a tree branch, a plant, a Coke bottle, if you choose. You can make a, and you, I should say it this way, you can make an idol out of a prominent figure, such as an athlete, a politician, somebody in the entertainment industry, like Taylor Swift. You know, if, if people are paying hundreds of dollars to see you perform, is that entertainment or is that idolatry? Think about that. These, some of these people we don't often think of as idols until we become obsessed with them. I watched an interview, and, and there's a couple of people who say, oh, we never missed a, a Taylor Swift concert. Well, you know, I've been to concerts years ago. Never paid more than about, I think it was 14 or $15 for a ticket. Didn't have to sit up front. I was there to see a band perform. Entertainment. Pure, simple. I, I wanted to see them live for some strange reason. Sounds much better in a recording. <laughs> you know, the professional recording studios do a really, really, really good job. But they weren't ever what I would consider heroes or idols. There were people that... Uh, we had an opportunity to meet and have dinner with years ago that were very good at what they did. And they're people. They're nothing more than people. They're, you know, they stick their nose in a glass of wine just like everybody else when it comes to, to wanting to know what it smells like. They're people. There's no need to make idols out of them. And yet, I know in the United States we have a TV show called American Idol. I think there's one in Great Britain as well. It's not called American Idol, though. <laughs> it's I don't know what the name of that is. Why is that? You know, it's it's kind of easy to think about an animal or an inanimate object as an idol. And you know, quite often Christians and, and Jews condemn that type of thing equally, right? However, there is one item that Christians, i got to be careful how I say this, hold in higher esteem and sometimes idolize. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with some of the traditions of some Christian churches, but when they walk in, there's that big cross up front, and the first thing they do is bow down to it. I've seen it done. Has it become an idol to them? or you know, Because they're going to say, oh, it just reminds me of the suffering of Jesus. Why do you bow down to it? Now, when the problem, well, I should say, the problem happens when it's more than a reminder. The problem happens when it becomes the focus of your attention, the focus of your belief. Many Christians are taught to pray to the cross, which is really no different than praying to one of the dead saints. It's something that cannot see, cannot hear, cannot answer. Leviticus 19.31 reminds us uh, not to turn to mediums or necromancers, people who talk to the dead. But many around the world will not hesitate to pray to Mary or some other dead saint, and they become necromancers themselves. Necromancy, of course, is communicating with the dead. Without realizing it, they've turned a dead person into an idol. 
big difference between mentioning the memory and name of someone we know and loved you know, that has already left this world and turning them into an idol, right? Our, our Creator knows the intent of our heart. He knows the intent of our prayer, and He understands that sometimes when we remember a loved one, what we, what we say or the way we say it may not be intended to actually communicate with them. <clears throat> but prayers to St. Augustine or Mary or somebody else, that's communicating. Prayer is communication. When we have something from someone, something that they used or something that they enjoyed having around, that can very easily turn into an idol as well. Now, I have uh, many tools that my deceased father had. Sometimes when I use one, I remember him using it. Um, but I don't actually talk to it. I don't idolize it. I use it for what it is, right? You know, whether it's a hammer or a saw or whatever it might be. It, it's something he used. He passed it down and really don't think he would appreciate me putting it in a box and putting it up and you know how people do right you've seen it tools are not idols they're they're to be used for what they were made for and it brings me to this point while we have things that the people that we miss had whether they're pictures something that they enjoyed having around, whatever it might be. That's fine if it reminds us of them and it helps keep that memory in the front of our minds. As long as we don't focus on that item and say, oh, Aunt Sarah, she just loved that pillow and, and I've got it here and it's it just so wonderful to have that. Well, is it sitting there as a pillow or is it sitting there for some other reason? You see, we have to be very, very vigilant and very careful to keep these things in place. When we cross that line of mentioning those people and memorializing them, and we begin to turn them into something other than who they are or what it is, we're no longer using that picture or that item in a way to remember. We actually begin to create an idol. We shift our focus, and when we shift our focus, we shift our heart as well. And that's where the real danger of idols is. It takes our focus off of what it should be on, like our Creator. And He tells us repeatedly not to allow that to happen. So let's look at a couple of places um, where we can actually see that. I'm going to read those. I am the Lord your God, you brought, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on their children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving devotion to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Exodus chapter 20, verses 2 through 6. Do not turn to idols to make yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 4. You know, so we can clearly see it's forbidden. Right? However, mankind has a problem. You know, very shortly after the Creator spoke in Mount Sinai, the, the people cornered Aaron into making a golden calf. They, they wanted something. They had just come out of Egypt. Egypt was filled with idols. It was filled with these gods, these false gods. And... <laughs> They're like, we want something we can see. We want something we can touch. We want something 
you know, mankind, we want, we want, we want. When that happened, our creator was ready to kill every one of them. Start over with Moses. Moses like, no, 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 I'm, I'm too old. You can't do this. And, and if you're going to wipe them out, just take me with you and, and, and I'll suffer the consequences. The Almighty said, no, Moses, since, since you're so insistent and you're right, I did promise Abraham. Instead, I am going to plague the people. And he installed a sacrificial system as a constant reminder that we are the ones who broke the covenant with him. And, and even with that in place to remind everybody of the penalty for sin, we continue in one way or another to sin. And <laughs> we know that this is going to continue. Now, I used a passage from Ezekiel the other day. We're going back there for a moment. Uh, if you want to remind everyone of that particular passage. Then he brought me to the entrance to the court, and I looked and I saw a hole in the wall. Son of man, he told me, dig through the wall. So I dug through the wall and discovered a doorway. Then he said to me, go in and see the wicked abominations they are committing here. So I went in and I looked, and engraved all around the wall was every kind of crawling creature and detestable beast, along with all the idols of the house of Israel. Before them stood 70 elders of the house of Israel with Yazaniah, son of Japan, Japan, standing among them. Each had a censer in his hand, and a fragrant cloud of incense was rising. Son of man, he said to me, do you see what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the darkness, each at a shrine of his own idol? For they are saying, the Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. Yeah. She asked me if I had any hard words for her to read today. It's Yazaniah, son of Shaphan. These are the leaders of the house of Israel worshiping idols. Now, they thought that the creator wouldn't see it because they did it in secret. But he sees it. Oh, he sees it, and he didn't like it. In fact, he's, you know, the, the spirit of the Almighty takes Ezekiel up. He grabs him by the head of his hair. He snatches him up, and he shows him these things. Makes him dig through the wall. Says, you go in, you look. I know what's going in there. I don't want to see it. Now, like I said the other day, this happens just before the man in linen marks the faithful with the Hebrew letter Tav on their forehead. There's no place in the Bible where this has happened yet. So we know this is a future event. Now, there is in Revelation 7 a similar event to this. And we can speculate that this is going to happen shortly before the end of the age. So we know that idol worship among religious leaders is commonplace. There's a lot of people that think that the reason for Noah's flood was because mankind was very barbaric. There's been barbarism throughout the ages without this kind of response from our Creator. What causes him to become the most angry, what causes him the greatest pain, what causes him the most displeasure in mankind is when we choose idols over him. The wording in Genesis 6, the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth and every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was altogether evil all the time. Evil all the time. You know, in, in Ezekiel's vision in chapter 8, he's asked several times, do you see Will you turn and see? Turn and look. Almost as if he's saying, look all around you, open your eyes, and see what's happening. And all Ezekiel saw were people turning their backs on the Creator in favor of worshiping idols. And these idols cannot hear, cannot answer. 
from the, the first idol coming from the north to women crying for Tammuz, to the priests and the elders worshiping the sun. All Ezekiel could see was idol worship. But there were always the few who reject the idols and remain faithful, and they are marked in that vision. Idol worship is so incredibly bad in the eyes of Creator, he's, he's willing to destroy everybody that does it. If you take part in it, he will wipe you out. It's that simple. He is, he is ready to <laughs> let you walk the plank into a lake of fire. So much so that he refuses to hear the prayers of those who bow down to idols and other gods. So, you know, let's be realistic, let's be honest. Unless your prayer to our Creator begins with repentance, don't even waste your breath. Don't even waste your breath, because unless you're willing to change, He's not going to listen. Unless you're ready to do things His way, you are alone with whatever idol you hold on to. But, if you're ready to change, you're willing to live the way he designed you to live, he is ready to hear, he is ready to forgive. It's that simple. But we are the ones who have to change because he's not going to. Idol worship is that serious, it's that dangerous. And yes, even the religious leaders are deceived by it. And they're going to pay for it with their eternity. It really doesn't matter if your idol is someone or something. We are the ones who need to give that up and change. Even Christians, I'm going to speak directly to you now. Even if you think that cross is nothing more than a, a reminder, why do you wear it? Do you wear it because it you think it defines you? Do you wear it because you think it makes you a better person? Do you keep it in your pocket as a reminder? Or do you keep it in your pocket as some kind of a lucky charm? Oh, I've got this. You know, nothing can hurt me as long as I have this. And when you do that, it's nothing different than a rabbit's foot or who's uh, Ahmed the dead terrorist, the camel toe, right, is the, the spoof on that. Uh, it's Jeff Dunham's puppet, if you haven't seen it, you aren't familiar with it. Is it for you more than just a reminder? Is it for you? Has it for you become more? You know, there's songs written about it. People bow down to it. People put it up on a shelf with candles around it, make a shrine out of it. It's kind of hard to say that has not become an idol when they do that. <clears throat> Churches, you're no different. You are no different. There are synagogues that I know of that will have their Torah scrolls and for them it's not just the word of God for them it has become an idol as well we need to be careful for that what are you holding on to you can't let go of what are you holding on to that is so important you refuse to let it go? What are you holding on to that is driving a wedge between you and your creator? What do you have that you can't get away from? Ask yourself those questions and consider a prayer that begins with repentance, a prayer that begins with, 
I didn't realize I'd been doing this. A prayer that starts with, I'm sorry, from the bottom of my heart. A prayer that is absolutely 100% genuine with your willingness to change. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you willing? Because we're the ones that have to change. The Almighty's not going to. He won't do it for me, and he's not going to do it for you. He didn't do it for anybody else throughout the ages either. But if you are willing to turn around, be obedient, and follow him, not making him an idol, but allowing him to be God, to set the standard for your life, to keep you living the life you were designed to live. And that is not following something, bowing down to anything that cannot hear, cannot speak, and will not answer. Think about those things. And we will be back in a couple of weeks or so. Right. So until then, we wish you many, many blessings. Many everyone. blessings.